This is Sharon Goulet from digitalnomadwannabe.com and I'm doing a fully updated review of key search and all the things you can do with it because it's had a lot of changes recently actually. And by changes, I mean awesome enhancements. They've added a lot of extra functionality. They're adding more all the time. And I'm not even using everything in here, but I feel like it's just so powerful. And it really, really helps me when I'm planning my content um, or when I am doing updates of my content. So I use it in lots of different ways beyond just finding a keyword for the article I want right now. So I'm gonna walk you through each of these screens. Um, ones like this one, which are about finding keywords for your articles, I do recommend you go watch my full tutorial on that, exactly how to do that, because it's a whole topic in itself and it'll distract from all the awesome things that we can currently see in Key Search. Um, so this is where you go when you log in, it'll go to this keyword research and it defaults to this first keyword research. And this is where you can look for keywords. So basically, you know, say I was writing an article on Sam Reap, I can look for the best article for that article, uh, best keyword for that article. So I put things to do in Sam Reap, it shows me the top 10, it shows me here what, how seasonal it is when people are looking for it. So you can see January is really popular. The top 10, so I can get an idea of how competitive it is and 700 other keywords over here related to it that I could look at instead. Keysearch also has this difficulty score, um, so you can check that. You only get so many checks per day. Um, you only get so many of these per day too. I think on the bottom plan, which is what I am, is about 20, uh, which I find more than sufficient. It's very rare I run into that, a problem with that. Now this score, um, it can be useful just for getting rid of some. You know, Usually if you see like a red, it's too hard, I wouldn't even look at it. Um, and green can be good. If you see blue, that's even easier. Um, so the lower, the better. But I really think you shouldn't just look at the score. Um, you know your site, how it goes, what topics Google loves it for, what it doesn't. And I really think it's important to look at the top 10 yourself rather than use the score. And, and you can see how to do that um, in the tutorial um, I have especially about that. The other thing with this tool is you wanna make sure that your location is right. If you're writing an article like this on CM Reap, then all locations might be fine, so that means global. Otherwise, you're probably more targeting a country and you would wanna put that country there. You also need to be mindful, although it shows you a top 10, that there is no global top 10. Search results are localized, so it can be more useful to look at where your target audience is by selecting the country. Now, this screen does do a lot beyond this. Uh, you can also use all these other different suggestions. And the one that I use quite a bit actually is this competitor's keywords, and I highly recommend that. There's quite a few uh, features in Key Search. I'm gonna show you that look at ways to analyze your competitors. And this is one of my favorite ones. All you need to do for this is actually put in the URL for your competitor and press search and it'll bring up all their keywords. So let's pick on Pinch of Yum. We're gonna pick on them a bit uh, in this demonstration. A well-known food blog that does really well. Although I'm not sure they're so into SEO. So those can be good sites to go spy on. So you'd be looking for your competitors. And again, I have a whole tutorial just on spying on competitors. You'd look for your um, competitors, ideally ones that have uh, decent authority, pretty well known, but they're not very good at SEO. So you know they probably get a lot of SEO traffic just because they're, they're high authority and they're well known. Um, but if they don't really know what they're doing with SEO and you do, then it can usually be quite easy to beat those people. So here we are. So it brings back 701 keywords that it ranks for and the ranking and the score. Now they would rank for more than 701, but it sort of hits the maximum of what it can give you. So you can sort by rank, so it's more interesting. You can see what gets to those top spots. Um, and you can use this to get ideas of what you can rank for. You know, if, if you find a site where if they can get to number four, then you can get to number three or five, you know, it can be really useful to get ideas. And then you can click on these, any of these, and, and see the top 10. So that's really useful. Now the next stop is this quick difficulty, which does very similar to what that other page did, but it just does it for one, one keyword. It doesn't bring you anything related. So it shows you the search volume as did the other page. Um, you can set it for a location. What's annoying is over here, it doesn't tell you what location you searched for previously, um, but I mean, you can just run it again. It's not so bad. And then a top 10 um, for that keyword. Now, I do find the search volume is not so reliable here. You're better off looking at the search volume on that tab I just showed you on keyword research. But it's just a quick and easy way to get a top 10. It doesn't take so long to run because it's just looking at one keyword. Um, and if you just want to look at something quicker, that's better. But most of the time, you will look at that keyword research tab. 
Now the next thing to look at is this Explorer tab. So like I said, I picked on Pinch of Yum. So it can be useful to just uh, look at a domain as a whole. Uh, I use these things mainly for competitors, just to get an idea of, of what they've got going on. You know, like look at their number of backlinks, referring domains. It's really just mostly to have a spy. I don't find this is as useful as other sites. Um, top competitors. Although this can be useful to look at for your own site to get some ideas if you're not sure who your competitors are to have a look at. Maybe go see what, what uh, Key Search reckons and, and, and spy on what they're doing. What domains refer, these can be handy in that um, if it's a competitor, maybe you could get a link from those domains and you could get some of these nice referrals. And there's like their anchor text on most of their ones and some other stuff that unless you're really into SEO, you're probably not gonna care that much about. So to be honest, I don't really find this one that useful. But in competitor analysis, there is lots of good stuff in here. So the first one being bank link checker. And when I'm doing link building, I use this a lot. You know, I talk about a lot of link building methods on Digital Nomad Wannabe, like in the link building challenge, you know, how to get comment links and collaborative posts and guest posts and all of that. But often some of the best, most clever links you can find are by spying on your competitors, looking at what links they have and then trying to replicate it yourself. And again, if you look at my tutorial on spying on competitors, you'll see some great examples of how to use this tool. But I find this really useful. I use it a lot. Now there's organic keywords, which is a bit like the one we just looked at in the keyword research tool where it shows keywords they're ranking for. I tend to just use the other one, but you can use this. Then there's competitor gap. Um, so this can be great. You can actually put in um, your site and a competitor's site, so say Pinch of Yum, and I'm just gonna put in one of my blogs, which actually isn't a food blog, but we'll just pretend it is for a moment. You would put one in the same niche as you. Um, and this will tell you what keywords they rank for that you don't rank for. So again, if you've got a competitor that's sort of closely aligned with you and you feel like if they rank for something, you can rank for it, this can be really useful um, and great for topic ideas. I, I love this one as well. It's a newer part of key search. So there we are, lots of ideas. So it's given me 500 different ideas of what I could write about as well as the URL on their site. So really powerful and awesome, this one. So that was that one. So URL metrics, this is just a quick and easy way to get things like the domain authority and page authority for sites. You know, you can just stick it in there. Or should we stick with pinch of yum? And um, and see what those ones are, especially because like if you look at domain authority a lot, Moz only lets you look at a certain number per day. So there you go, you just get a little bit of information. Not super useful, but uh, sometimes I look at it for my own sites actually. And then page analyzer. So this is actually looking at a page on my blog. I use it more for analyzing my own site. And sometimes it can just give you ideas of things that you've missed. Um, now, I do wanna say with this, some of these things it brings up, I don't think really matter, um, or it gets it wrong sometimes. I could say you don't have a meta description or something when you do, you know, so, you know, if you know you've done it, I trust yourself, you know, um, but it can be useful to have a little look, you know, like it's checking my titles right, and that I've got properties set and what they are headings it's actually just useful to see the headings sometimes um, just to make sure you know that they make sense and, and that they're how you want them it doesn't like that I have some missing alt tags you know so I might want to go fix that um, so there's just some little things down here that you can have a look at and see if there's anything that you think you could improve so it's a useful tool to look at when you're like really trying to improve a post is when I would look at this and you can see your speed too oh, I'm sure I'm not the only one who always feels a bit stressed when I look at speed um, so that can be useful too. So that was all the competitive analysis. Uh, now there is YouTube research, and I must admit I've never used this, but if you're a YouTuber, you might wanna go in there and see how much, how much it can help you. Um, now there's rank tracking. Now I'm not gonna open this one because <laughs> it just shows some sensitive information about all the keywords I'm tracking, but this is where you can track keywords for your website. So I recommend putting in your main keywords. Uh, now you only get a certain limit. I think it's 50 on the bottom plan that it will track for you. Um, I actually pay an extra $5 a month, so I get a ton more and I think that's worthwhile, but that's up to you. Um, and every day it will go update the rankings and it will make little graphs if you wanna look at them and things like that. So you can see what's going on with your main keywords um, and, and that's what I use it for. You, when you're adding those, you can also localize them. So you can put them um, like, say for my Australian sites, like Simpler and Smarter showing up here, you know, I put for Australia. You can even localize to a city. 
um, and that as well, uh, just so it's more accurate. Because remember, there is no global top 10. So ideally, when you're rank tracking, you do want to set them to a country. And then finally, there's this content assistant, which I have just got really in love with lately. Um, and it's useful for two things, um, when you're creating new posts and when you're updating old ones. That's what I recommend using it for. So you already know your main keyword. Come in here and it'll just help you. So say I'm just thinking about writing best places to visit in Australia. I've just found that. Um, so it tells you some information that you would get on those other screens. What I find useful here is this average word count. Um, whenever you're writing an article and you want to rank in Google, you should be aiming to have the best article on the internet on it. And usually that means a long word count. So this is the average of what's ranking on the first page. So it gives you an idea of how long the articles are already. And you should be aiming to go over that really. You should be higher than average because there'll always be a couple of things on the home page, on that first page for keywords like this that aren't that good and aren't that thorough. So you know you want to you want to be better than average. I'm just telling you how many keywords they found. Um, now these are words that they're seeing appear a lot of the time in that first page result. So those top 10 results, most articles mention these words. So for an article like this, where you're talking like a list sort of post, it's great, right? Because it's kind of done some of your research for you. I'd be definitely looking at including everything it brings up. Um, it's weird how Europe, Middle East and stuff appears a lot, but you may want to think about including most of the words here where they make sense because it's like Google's seen a pattern that those top articles have those words. So, you know, you want to match that pattern. So I would also think about just including them where you can. When you've actually written the article or if you're looking at an improving an existing one, you can actually copy and paste all the text in here and then it will color code these. So it'll be blue if you've included them and orange if you haven't. So it'll make it really easy to know what to add. So then if you're updating a post, you know, you can go put in there. Or if you're writing a new one, you can put in there when you're finished and see what it comes up with. Now in this keyword tab, these are related keywords. Now if you've done good keyword research already using my methods, you probably would already have all these words from the keyword research tab, but Here's ones and, and it'll be good when you stick in your article, it'll tell you if you've included them or not as well. And what's interesting is the first ranked Google result, it's gone and seen, um, so the one that's number one for this keyword, best places to visit in Australia, these are other keywords where it ranks really high for. So these are definitely keywords I would include in your article as well. Now research can be kind of handy when you're writing it. It's just like little snippets from what's currently there. It can give you an idea of what people are writing about, what your competition's like. Just sort of give you a nice quick overview. I think that's worth a little look um, when you're writing your article or before you write it, just to get some ideas. Now also like this questions page, which brings up questions people are asking in Google or in forums like Quora. So some of these you'll have from your keyword research, but if it's come from something like Quora, maybe not so much. Um, but it'll give you a lot of ideas of what you might want to include as well to make yourself sure you have a really awesome article. So definitely look at that. And again, if you had your post here, it would tell you if it was already included or not. And then this just gives you the first page. So you might have already looked at this on another tab. Most probably you have. Um, so uh, it, nothing new, but it does tell you the word count or you can visit the page easily. So if you want to see that, um, that information is all there for you. So I hope this introduction to key search and this little bit of a review has been helpful for you. You know, you can see key search is really quite powerful. You know, it's really cheap. I just use the bottom um, tier one and it's rare that I have any problems with running out of my allowance, although I do pay for extra keywords. Um, and I really highly recommend it. And I recommend you watch my other tutorials to get a really good idea of how you can use key search for your business.